All right, so let's do predictions for NXT TakeOver. Stand and deliver night one. Night one. Uh, I should do night one and night two, if we're being honest. I mean, what it really is the point here of doing only one of these things. So in any event, let's do it. So uh, let's do, yeah, we'll do night two as well. I have to find the card. I just have the card to night one right here. So night one begins at seven o'clock on Peacock because there will be a pre-show match. Zoe Stark versus Tony Storm. I can't believe our cherry lip pod goddess has been bumped to the goddamn pre-show. What is wrong with these people? Zoe Stark is really good. Tony Storm is really good. This ought to be good. Uh, I'm guessing Tony Storm is about to leave the brand because what else is for there for her to do? So, I mean, if she's going to leave, she should put Zoe Stark over on the way out if she's leaving. If she, I don't see why she used to stick around, if we're being honest. Um, so I'm going to go with Zoe Stark. Um, I'm so sorry, Tony. I, I didn't mean it. I'm just saying I hope you go on to bigger and better things. And hopefully you get you get the call to challenge Rhea Ripley or Bianca Belair post-WrestleMania. Those are two of my picks. Spoiler alert. So uh, let's see. You have the Gauntlet Eliminator NXT North American Championship match. Uh, Leon Ruff, Isaiah Swerve Scott, uh, Bronson Reed, Cameron Grimes, Dexter Loomis, and L.A. Knight. All right. Uh, the winner will face Johnny Gargano on night two. So I'm going to think, all right, they, they, they're putting all of this stuff in the way of somebody. It's going to be a baby face. Um, so that either leaves Leon Ruff, Bronson Reed, or Dexter Loomis. They're all the baby faces. Uh, not going to be Leon Ruff. He's really skinny. Uh, probably not going to be Dexter Loomis. Though, I wouldn't be surprised if it was him. So, I'm going to go with Bronson Reed winning this thing and wrestling Johnny Gargano on TakeOver. And, I will, you know what? I would say he should win. Bronson Reed should come out of this thing with the title. We, Johnny Gargano does not need it. We do not deserve Johnny Gargano to be the North American champion. We don't deserve it. I think we've been good boys and girls. We don't need Johnny Gargano um, fucking up our TV every week. So, then, uh, tag team championship match, triple threat. MSK versus the Grizzly Young Veterans versus Legado del Fantasma. Um, the titles are vacant. Um, I personally will put the titles on the Grizzly Young Veterans. Uh, that's what they, I would imagine that's what you brought these these guys over for. Same thing with Tony Storm. And, you know, why would you bring people from the UK if you're not going to at least push them as stars in the company? Put the Grizzly Young Veterans over. And then let MSK chase them for the titles. Legato Death Fatalma should be going to SmackDown or something. Because uh we need we need some space to be moved around here on NXT. So people need to move around. Uh so I would go with the Grizzle Young Veterans. Uh the NXT UK championship. Walter versus Tommaso Ciampa. And uh, man, this is gonna be this is gonna rock. Man, I might actually eat a pizza. Not a whole pizza, obviously. I'm I'm not, I, I don't think I can handle that anymore. I'd probably have to drown myself in Pepto-Bismol in order to survive it. I need like a shawarma or a pizza or something to go to go with this because I'm going to be giggity giggity goo on this joint right here, man. So I'm going to go with Walter because obviously um, I don't see any reason for Tommaso Ciampa to be an NXT UK champion. And on Thursday, there will be an NXT UK championship match between Walter and, um, oh God, what's it? Rampage Brown in NXT UK. Um, so yeah, just have Walter beat Tommaso Ciampa. Then we can pretend he went over to NXT UK and Russell Rampage Brown. And it's not a taped match. Uh, and the main event of the show, Io Shirai versus Raquel Gonzalez for the NXT women's championship. And I think it's time to put the belt on Raquel Gonzalez or get her off this brand. Uh, that's my, that's my thing. Okay. Either put, either put the belt on Raquel or get her off this brand. And because um, I think Vince knows what to do. If you just about everybody that Triple H doesn't really push and he should. You know, Triple H has dropped the ball on a lot of people. I should say that here because how long, how long I got? It's only four minutes. I can say this here. Triple H has dropped the ball on a lot of talent that Vince has picked up and did something with. Like people notice that when Vince, you know, drops the ball on Nakamura or Rude or something like that, they don't see. Like Alexa Bliss was on NXT, did nothing. You know, 
Vince made her interesting. Uh, Carmella in NXT didn't really do anything. Carmella is the only part of that group that's still around. You know, <laughs> Liv Morgan was pretty bland. Nobody doing nothing in, in NXT. They, you know, gave her some notoriety. You know, they don't always score. Elias was another one came from NXT. You know, he's got a pretty good solid roster spot. You know, he's not probably not where he should be given how over he was in the past. But, you know, um, this is it's kind of ridiculous that sometimes what Triple H chooses to drop the ball on. And if he doesn't want to give the belt to Raquel Gonzalez, which he absolutely should, she needs to get off this brand and be moved, you know, preferably to Raw. Okay, but I think she needs to run in NXT a little bit longer because she's kind of the new booty there. You don't really want to take her off the brand and put her in there with, you know, Bianca or Sasha or anybody like that because she's such a dominant force. But So I definitely think she just needs to beat Io Shirai. And then maybe they build up to have a rematch because Io, you know, being champion forever, should probably get a rematch and then, you know, have Io lose that match too. And then we can start looking at maybe doing EO and Zia Lee or, you know, something like that to keep her occupied. Um, but so I'm going to go with Raquel Gonzalez. So let me find the rest, uh, the, the matches for night two. And we could talk about that show too. All right. So let's talk about this uh, night two, which will take place on Peacock at eight o'clock. You got the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship, Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Um, we don't need to switch these titles like Ember and Shotzi need to establish these belts. You need to get like a good two to three month run out of being the champions. So they definitely need to win this match. And then we double back maybe in two or three months. Let Candice and Indy Hartwell build up some wins, maybe get in a different feud. And then they come back and win the titles. Like I really don't care for Candice LeRae being real honest. I really don't care for Indy Hartwell either. But I want these titles to be solidified. You know, they need to have a run. And Shotzi deserves to have a run. Let them run. As corny and as bullshit as Ember Moon is, let her run as and, and establish these women tag team titles as something. Okay? Let them establish them instead of just flip-flopping the belts again and again. It's kind of ridiculous. Let's see the NXT North American Championship. Uh, as I said... Uh, Bronson Reed should win that gauntlet eliminator and then come and beat Johnny Gargano for the North American title. We don't need Johnny Gargano. We don't deserve Johnny Gargano. Uh, the Cruiserweight Championship Unification Ladder Match, Santos Escobar versus Jordan Devlin. And this is the way I look at this. Uh, Jordan Devlin has not had a run because Europe was shut down. So he was champion, but he didn't really get to defend it that much. So, like, he won the title, I think, in January 2020. And he never really got to do that much with it because the world was shut down in late February, early March. So, Santos Escobar kind of had his run as Cruiserweight champion. Escobar has done all there is for him to do. I really should get, again, I should take, we should take Legado del Fantasma and move them, preferably to SmackDown, to feud with the Mysterios. And uh, get some real, get some steam out of that. Um, I would be cool with them moving to Raw too. But I think that they have a better chance on SmackDown. Um, I can tell you my booking philosophy is, you know, who got to get the fuck off this brand. That's my booking philosophy when it comes to NXT. When it comes to these big shows like this, it's kind of like, okay, we need to, we need to start saying bye-bye to some of these people. Okay. Some of these guys got to go. And I'm thinking like, all right, certain people aren't going anywhere. So they can stay. But everybody else, we need to start saying bye-bye. And I think Santos Escobar is a guy who is SmackDown or Raw ready. His English is perfect. The character is there. He got something to talk about. I don't see why he needs to hang out in NXT. Plus, he's already 35 or maybe even 36. We need to start. We need to get him get him moving you know we, we got him we got him in a big match it's gonna be a great match it's gonna be it's gonna rock for sure let him take this momentum of coming off of this great match and boom send him to smackdown it could be great to feud with the mysterios that could be awesome unsanctioned match adam cole versus kyle o'reilly 
All right, uh, similar thinking here. It's going to be similar thinking all the way through to some bitch. Uh, Adam Cole needs to leave NXT. He's got to go. All right. And nobody better than packing except Kyle O'Reilly. Nobody better. All right. Kyle O'Reilly needs to stick around in NXT because there's still some stuff he hasn't done. He hasn't won a title yet. Um, I want that feud between Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly. I want that. So I would keep Kyle O'Reilly. Plus, the babyface needs to win this feud. You know, the you got Adam Cole cussing this guy out, you know, trying to end his career, trying to destroy his life, you know, ruin the friendship and everything. The babyface needs to win this feud. But there's nothing else for Adam Cole to do. Literally, after he wrestles Kyle O'Reilly, there's nothing for him to do. You'll be grasping at straws to keep this guy on this roster. And now that they're not going to be going head up with AEW anymore, you don't need for him to be on this show. You could actually go back to doing what NXT is supposed to do, and that is building new stars. Build new stars. Adam Cole needs to go to Raw. And if Drew McIntyre is going to be the WWE champion, perfect opponent for him, okay? And I'm not saying do it immediately, but I'm saying it's the perfect opponent for Adam Cole. Adam Cole needs to go to Raw. So I'm going to go with Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, main event of both nights, NXT Championship, Karrion Cross versus Finn Balor. So Finn Balor has been on the main roster once already. Um, it didn't quite work out, <laughs> which is, which is uh, not saying much. He was the first ever uni uh, Universal Champion, but that's the, that was it. He was the Intercontinental Champion a couple of times. He got to crush Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania once which was very interesting considering Bobby's position in WrestleMania now. Um, I guess he's going to go into WrestleMania two different occasions as a transitional champion. A little uh, spoiler from my WrestleMania predictions. But uh, Cross uh, didn't get a run with the belt. Doesn't mean that he should win, but I don't see any reason why he should lose. Um, I don't think Finn Balor is the guy to beat Karrion Cross. I think when you beat Karrion Cross, it needs to be another big guy who is, you know, ready to carry the torch of the brand. And I don't think I think Cross when he when the moment he loses, like Keith Lee, the moment he loses, he's out of there, right? So um, I I don't see Balor. I'm not sure what you do with him. I don't see why he would stick around. So I would see like maybe Balor loses and goes to Raw, goes to SmackDown. Um, I'm pretty sure he will resist that. Um, and I'm pretty sure they'd probably drag out a rematch or something like that in order to keep people like he, him and Io Shirai or whatever um, on the roster a little bit longer. But he, some, <laughs> Balor can't be here forever and not, you know, and be in a Tommaso Ciampa position where he's just kind of standing around twiddling his thumbs and waiting for something to happen. You know, um, if he's going to do, I don't know what they could do with him. I'm not saying we need to get rid of him, but uh, they need to get rid of him, you know. <laughs> so uh, I guess I am saying they need to get rid of him. You know, I'm not that any, there's anything wrong with Finn Balor, but, you know, NXT is just, you know, it's, it's too full. We got to start moving some pieces around. Guys got to start taking some risks. Got to let the security blanket go. I've been saying this for months. It's time to start letting it go. I think Karrion Cross wins and we say bye-bye to Finn Balor. Maybe we do another feud on his way out. He feuds with somebody else. Maybe they go back to his feud with Walter, which they were building up uh, before the pandemic. They were building up a feud between Finn Balor and Walter. And maybe that's what you do. Maybe you send him over to NXT UK for a little while. That would be fun. You know, maybe it's, you know, we've done what we can with Finn Balor and NXT. Maybe we send him over to NXT UK. He could be the flag bearer over there. Um, and that would be fun too. You know, you could have Walter and Finn Balor when they can start having crowds in England or Ireland or whatever. That would be great. See, I'm always thinking. Uh, so that's my, that's my predictions of all for both nights. For night two, I'm picking Karrion Cross, uh, Jordan Devlin, Bryson Reed to win the Gauntlet Eliminator and to defeat uh Johnny Gargano. Oh, I forgot about Kushida and Pete Dunn. Yeah, I would go I would personally the Pete Dunn's going to win, but Kushida needs a big win. You know, I forgot about Kushida and Pete Dunn. 
Uh, Kushida is a guy that they have not been using properly on NXT. It's been an embarrassment. Um, he needs a big win, and I don't see him beating Pete Dunne, but he should beat him. Um, so um, on night one, I got uh, Bronson Reed winning the Gauntlet Eliminator. Uh, I got uh, Zoe Stark winning the pre-show match over Tony Storm. I got uh, Raquel Gonzalez defeating Io Shirai. I got Grizzly Young Veterans winning the Tag Team Championships. And, you know, that's that ought to be, well, that's five matches right there. There's another match I'm probably missing. Hang on, let me, let me check it out because I'm pretty sure I'm missing a match. But, you know, whatever. And then uh, night two, I got uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Ember Moon, and Shotzi Blackheart, Jordan Devlin, and Karrion Cross. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for your time. I shall talk to you guys later. And I'm out. Yeah. Yeah.